Morning everyone. Morning. Welcome to our worship this morning. Everything you need for the service is on the screen and the large bold print is your opportunity to participate in the prayers and make them your own. The service is being recorded as well for our online ministry. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. We hear from Mark's Gospel today. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray together. Loving God, the light of minds that know you, the life of the souls that love you and the strength of the hearts that serve you. Help us so to know you that we may truly love you and so to love you that we may faithfully serve you whose service is perfect freedom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Song in itself is 
because a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions under the first covenant. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, chapter 12, beginning at verse 13. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then they sent him some Pharisees and some Herodians to trap him in what he said. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you putting me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me see it. And they brought one. Then he said to them, Whose head is on this and whose title? They answered, the Emperor's. Jesus said to them, Give to the Emperor the things that are the Emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were utterly amazed at him. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, he asked them, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and beside him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbour as oneself, this is much more important than the all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that, he answered wisely. He said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, as we reflect on these readings today, help us to grasp something about our work in the world, what we're called to do and called to be as your church in the world. We might go from here with a new understanding of what it is that we are to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be comfortable. Going to be a bit outrageous here and say these. The Australian Christian lobby does not speak for me. It does not speak for me as a Christian. Conservative Christianity does not speak for me. And liberal Christianity does not speak for me either. There is a mistake made, I think, when some Christians think that the lifestyle we are to live as the follower of Jesus should be the lifestyle that belongs to the whole world. Everybody in it. Likewise, there is a mistake to think that the culture of our society is to be the same as the culture of the church. And it's true sometimes that the culture of our church, or sorry, our, our society, has rightly challenged the church the culture of us as church. And of course we are greatly aware 
of how Christianity has been influential in the, the lifestyle that we have in this country, the culture that we have in this country. And I suspect that it's the past influence of Christianity on the formation of, of the culture of our country that's a part of the problem. Well, that's a bad thing. But that, that influence causes us to continue to make the mistake of reading the Bible as, it, as if it's meant to be speaking into all of society. I think we need to learn to read the Bible again as something that is speaking to us as Christians, to us as the followers of Jesus, and not to the world. It's a challenge to us. In the marriage equality debate, the legal recognition of same-sex couples, which was called marriage, was opposed strongly by the Australian Christian lobby across the whole of society. They argued that it was not consistent with how they read the, the Bible or believe that God wanted for his people. Well, that bit is true in some respect. But not all of our society is Christian. And not all of our society are followers of Jesus. In most things, what we may expect for ourselves, we cannot expect to be the same for everyone. But we are obliged to witness to it in one way or another. Although marriage equality has been recognised in the greater community, it is at this time still not acceptable within the Anglican Communion. Having said that, I have a friend who is indeed a homosexual, he's a priest, and he's now married to a male hairdresser. And he's able to do this because he now ministers in the Anglican Church of Canada. Same-sex marriage has been accepted in the Episcopal Church of Scotland, in the Episcopal <coughs> Church of the USA, and in the Anglican Church of Canada. Because there are different opinions within the Anglican Communion about whether this is acceptable or not, has resulted in tensions within the communion and has been a threat to our unity. I don't want to get back into the debate about uh, same-sex marriages. I just raise it as an example of how we as a church are in the world but not of the world. We live in a creative tension. I like the words in the contemporary, one of the contemporary confessions we use, and we'll use it today in our family communions, that reads, For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. We are reminded how easy it is for us to let the lifestyle of the world determine who we are. In the same way, though, we must be aware of imposing our Christian life on those who are not Christians. We can speak into the world, but we need to let the world be the world. And we need to be the distinctive people of God within the world. So Pharisees and Herodians come to Jesus with the intention of trying to get him to incriminate himself according to their legalistic approach to the worship of God. They ask Jesus, is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Should we pay them or should we not? Let's put this question in a little bit of perspective. You remember later that Jesus will go into the temple, well, in the beginning of John's Gospel, it happened at the beginning of his ministry. In the, in the Synoptic Gospels, it actually happens towards the end. Jesus goes in there and angrily turns over the money-changing tables. What are these money-changing tables? Well, their purpose is to exchange the money of the Roman occupation, the denarii, to be an acceptable coinage to pay the temple tax, the temple shekel. You could not offer God the money of the world. What Jesus is getting at here is saying this, bring me a denarius and let me see it. And they brought one. Then he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperor's. And Jesus said to them, Give to the emperor the things that belong, that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. Here Jesus is making the clear distinction about what we're meant to be and what the world is. But at the same time there are aspects of being in the world which we need 
to comply. We are not of the world. So there are things that we will also not be a part of, or that we will do differently. And overhearing this dispute, Jesus and the Pharisees and the Herodians causes a scribe to come to Jesus and ask him what is the first commandment. See, it is a scribe. He would have known what the first commandment was. He knew. And I can't help wondering whether there's a motivation behind his question. Something like, how do we work out what is the proper thing to do? How do we work out how to be in the world but not of the world? And Jesus responds with what he understands from Scripture. What we know as the two great commandments as he summarises all of the commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength and you shall love your neighbour as yourself. I think his answer says something to us. It's our job, our task as church, as individuals and Christians, to first love God in all aspects of heart, soul, mind and strength, however we understand those things to be. But without any expectation on whether anyone else is on the same journey as us, or on any spiritual journey, we are to love them in the same way that we are to love ourselves. If we don't want the world to impose upon us what the world wants us to be, then we have no right to impose on the world what we want it to be. Jesus makes it quite clear that there is a difference in lifestyle for those who are his followers. However, in a surprising way, the life we know that God wants for those who are followers of Jesus, we are to enable others to have even if they do not share our faith commitment in God. This life we are to live is to reflect what we know as the values of the kingdom, God's kingdom. We desire to live it because we know the love God has for us. Luke defines some of the values of God's kingdom to favour the poor, to release those who are captive, to restore those who have lost their sight, to free those who are oppressed, and to release people from their debts. All those things that we would want for ourselves, we would want for them, surely, without expecting them into some sense of rules and obligations. This is a summary of what we would call social justice, isn't it? There are choices that the world will make about how they are to live, but it is our hope that everyone will be able to share equally in all the resources and life that this creation has to offer. For this reason, it's right that we speak into the world about those things that concern us, where the issues are concerned with injustice and oppression. The Bible recognises that those who were present with Christ lived in a time of the world that was just as diverse and pluralistic as our own. But the Bible makes it clear we are to be distinct to those who work and play and live around us. Christianity was able to influence the life we have in this country because for such a long time the church was at the centre of society. And it's too easy for people now to pair themselves as Christians but not to participate in church or nurture their relationship with God. But the result of this being in the centre of society, the church has lost its distinction to society. But in this present age, and if you don't think this is true, then I'll be surprised. We are being pushed to the margins of society. And I suspect that's where the early church was. And I suspect that it will be helpful in enabling us to maintain or re-establish the distinctive nature we were meant to have. When Jesus asked to justify his understanding of being faithful to God in a pluralistic society, he spoke from his understanding of Scripture. Scripture, the Old and New Testaments, are fundamental to our identity as Anglicans and a historical reason for the Reformation of the Western Church 
and the split of our communion from the Catholic Church. The Bible is referred to as the canon of Scripture. It means it is the rule of Scripture. So if you want to determine what is right, it needs to be supported by Scripture. And it's true that there is a diversity of understanding and of reading Scripture throughout our communion. In fact, we can actually believe what we want. And that's where the diversity comes in. The 39 Articles of Religion state, however, that we can only teach what is necessary for salvation that can be supported by Scripture. And that is why teachers of faith will be judged more strictly and why I always wear rubber soled shoes. <laughs> I found it curious as I reviewed the responses I had to the strategic planning survey. There was a, a consideration that we have established Bible study groups or house groups. However, in the suggestions that I asked for regarding what you thought of the core values of the church, there was something that was missing. And that was the Bible, Scripture. This I know from my reading of the Bible. Nowhere you'll find it says, be in the world but not of the world. But it's implied there. It's clearly implied there that we are to be a distinctive community to the world. And what we have to offer in that distinction is a value to the world in terms of what it's missing. That is what we need to live out. And that is what we need to be. And that is what we need to offer. Not expecting people to be like us unless they become one of us. The Lord be with you. So I can invite you to stand with me as we together declare our faith in God. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let us pray for the world and for the church. Please sit on there as is comfortable. God our Creator, you made the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. It is your own. Hear the prayers we bring for your people. God of freedom, we pray for all who live in bondage. Teach us how to unbind the captive, to bring justice to those who are oppressed, so that your people shall be your, our people. God our God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our peace, we pray for all in places of conflict or war. Teach us how to resolve our disputes, to live in harmony with one another so that your people shall be our people. God, our God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our welcome. We pray for all who are alienated and rejected. Teach us how to open our arms to the friendless, to offer hospitality to the stranger, so that your people shall be our people. God our God, 
in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our hope. We pray for all who are in trouble or distress. Teach us how to heal the wounded, to bring comfort to the sad, so that your people shall be our people. God, our God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our salvation. We pray for all who are members of your church. By your grace, rescue the lost and increase in us our love for you, so that we may be your people and you may be our God. God, our God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our promise, remember those who have died in your love, all who have loved you with heart and mind and soul and strength. Help us to follow the example of your saints and bring us home to your eternal presence so that we may enter into the inheritance that you prepare for all your people. God our God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God our God, accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness, and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives, Father, forgive us, Thank save God. us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you, Father, forgive us, Thank save God. us and help us. For failing you by what we do, and think and say, Father, forgive us, Thank save God. us, and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us, Father, forgive us, Thank save God. us, and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son, Father, forgive us, Thank save God. us, and help us. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins. Open our eyes to God's truth. Strengthen us to do God's will. And give us the joy of the kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you stand with me? We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Through Christ our Lord who came and preached peace to those who are far off and those who are near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Faith takes the little that 
glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is right to praise you, faithful God, always and everywhere. For with your only begotten Son and life-giving Spirit, you are the one true God from everlasting to everlasting. At the dawn of time you wrought from nothing a universe of beauty and splendour, bringing light from darkness and order from chaos. You formed us male and female in your image and endowed us with creative power. We turned away from you, but you did not abandon us. You called us by name and searched us out, making a covenant of mercy, giving the law and teaching justice by the prophets. And so we praise you, joining with your faithful people of every time and place, singing the eternal song. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When the fullness of time was come, you sent your Son to be born of Mary. For our image of your glory, he learned obedience to you in all things, even to death on a cross, breaking the power of evil, freeing us from sin and putting death to blood. You raised him from death, exalting him to glory for the new day dawn. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You have gathered us together to feed on Christ and to remember all he has done for us. Gracious God, we recall the death of your Son, Jesus Christ. We proclaim his resurrection and ascension, and we look with expectation for his coming again. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son. And bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour, glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains, which have been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be out from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. So come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ. The remembrance that he did, died, and rose again for us, and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. <laughs>
Christ shed for us, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament you assure us of your goodness and love. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in the world and finally be brought to that table where all your saints feast with you forever. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord, send us out in the power of your Spirit so that you may work to your praise and glory. Amen. Just a couple of notices for you, if I may, please. Um, on your pew sheet for the Christmas worship for the 26th of December, I put in there Ballyburn, but that should actually read in Belize. Okay, uh, that was a decision that we made the parish council, and um, I managed to lose my parish council minutes, but I found them again, so I was able to correct it. So um, that's Christmas. Christmas falls on the Saturday, so we were thinking, what the heck do we do with Sunday? We don't want to have the, all the three services again on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So we'll just have the one service on the Boxing Day for those who want to come. We'll have that at Inverley. And, uh, and if you're there, you're there. If you're not, I'll pack up and go home. Also, I've made a slight change to the um, arrangements for our, our annual meeting of parishioners. So instead of having the meeting at 10 o'clock, to have them at 10.30, so that gives us a chance to have half an hour for some refreshments after we finish the service and then moving into the meeting itself. So that's there as well. All right, next, uh, next Sunday is, um, is uh, Four Saints. So we'll be celebrating that next Sunday. Yes, uh, the color will be white in its dressing. Okay, is there something else I needed to talk about? I don't think so, I think that's everything. Any birthdays? Any anniversaries? 
I believe it sure, um, I know it surely would have been her 64th wedding anniversary this week, but also Rosemary's and John's 64th Okay. <coughs> well, Shirley's with us now. She's with us now. Yeah. Online. Yeah. Oh. So <laughs> shall we pray for Shirley? <laughs> Loving Father, we thank you for those people that you've made a part of our lives, and particularly those people that have been a part of our lives through, through that commitment of relationship that we, that we call marriage. And we thank you for the memory of, of Shirley and, and her husband and the anniversary falling this week as, uh, as all of that stirs up memories within, within Shirley. We pray, Lord, that by your grace, we make those memories good, we make those memories joyful, and you make those memories give her peace, particularly in this time of struggle, for which we pray for her now too, that you will be with her and bring her to the healing that you would have for her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Phil. Um, next is Seppo, um, I need a helper. It doesn't matter who, they just to sort of serve for, for the uh, Devin Chief Yeah. So, um, if you know anybody that would like to sort of do it. Uh, I sent out the email. The conditions, of course, are that need to be fully vaccinated in order to be a part of that. So, um, yeah. That's why the following month, Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Well, I invite you to stand for the blessing. Um, we also say a prayer for for um, John's wife. For, oh, for Rosemary having and a fall. Also for um, for Dan, who's not too well. Yeah. Okay. So yes, please be doing that. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest to you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Riding on a cloud, shining.